everybody, Gina DeLuca here. I am very excited to be part of this Love is Love Pride Month collab with all of these fantastic artists. Um, I am pouring a rainbow. <laughs> I do love a straight pour uh, for rainbow colors because I do not get mud when I do straight pours. So that's what's happening today. I'm going to be doing a moving straight pour. And uh, wandering straight pour, whatever you want to call it. I'm using the satin enamels from Deco Art in pure white. This is going to make these other paints turn into cell makers. So the colors that I have, I have uh, Liquitex Basics and Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue and Cadmium Red Deep Hue. Thalo Blue and Thalo Green. And I have Dioxazine Purple. I made my own orange using the um, Cadmium Yellow and, uh, and the Red. So to these small cups, I have added um, some flow trowel in the bottom of the cup, just enough to cover the bottom of the cup. I added about uh, a teaspoon of the satin enamels and about a teaspoon of the paint. Mixed those together. And then I added my flow trowel, uh, about two parts flow trowel to paint. So, you know, I'm mixing smaller cups here. So I guess it would be like, uh, I don't know, maybe I did a tablespoon of, of Floetrol. But two parts Floetrol, three parts Floetrol, either way is fine. But 50-50 mix on the satin enamels to your colored paints. And I mix them to the consistency that I am looking for. Um, once I add the paint to the, or the Floetrol to the paints, then I thin it with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get a consistency. This is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears quickly. Coming off the stick in a nice, thin, even stream. Um, maybe get down a little lower, maybe. But that's where we are with that. And then this is going to be my background slash base coat and no satin enamels in that. That is going to be the paint that the satin enamels are going to react with. So that's going to fall to the background. These should make cells. Hopefully, it's been a minute since I opened this jar, but hopefully there was enough of the uh, good stuff in there to make it sell for me. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute. But if you have not, what we have, this is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need. Exact paint, brands, colors, uh, consistency, recipe, and of course the technique, all of the stuff that I can't fit onto a card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in this painting. And there are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also at amazon.com. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my cup. I'm going to add some of the background paint. I always like to do this first. Um, I have in the past uh, put too much on my canvas and then didn't have enough for my pour. Okay, so I'm coming in at just under two ounces there. All right, so now I'm going to lay down my base coat. And I've got something new today. Check out this bad boy. We're gonna see how this how this fares. 
probably a bit of a learning curve for this one to exactly how I need to pour it on there. But for those big canvases, who wait, this is going to be awesome. All right, my base coat is down. And now I'm going to add some paint to the cup. I'm going to pour from up high and I'm going to allow these paints to sink and churn. And I'm going to start with the purple first, pouring from up high, allowing it to sink and churn. If you are not comfortable with this action of pouring from up high, just practice in your sink with water and you will get used to it. I was a bartender, so that's kind of something I'm used to. I do have a bit left of this in here and I'm just going to go over top of that so that all of the paints have a chance to react. This is going to be more than enough paint for this canvas. Okay, let's make a mess, shall we? I'm going to pour from up high Actually, I think I'm going to kind of do like this wavy. Let's get crazy. Sometimes that's when the coolest stuff happens. I'm going to get closer to the canvas as I get towards the end of the cup. That gives me much more control. Well, there's some cool stuff happening here. I don't know what it will look like once it's all stretched and everything does what it's going to do. Cells popping up and such. But there's some really pretty stuff happening right there. Just going to shift that weight a little bit. It was kind of heavy on this side. And I'm going to give this a quick torch. Pop some of these bubbles. So I really like what's happening here. I want to try to preserve this if I can. This is like the most interesting part to me. Actually, that's pretty interesting too. So, you know, there is a lot of paint on this canvas, so I have to decide how am I going to disperse this. Again, popping more bubbles. Clearly, I need to add some more butane. Okay, typically I would allow this to sit and allow for the cells to develop and then stretch those cells and 
um, turn them into bolder cells. I'm not sure if I want to do that. I am, I am, I might want them more as pearl cells. I don't know. But the longer I wait to make that decision, the more that decision is being made for me. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm going for it. So I'm gonna tilt this end off first. And ever so gently and patiently trying to not mess this part up. It's gonna be tricky, y'all. Okay, and so right now the weight of my paint is down here. That is what I'm keeping an eye on. Oh, this corner, this corner has me nervous. Nope, I had a feeling. It's hard with this kind of canvas to get that much control. If that were on a square, I would have a much easier time, but the weight of the paint has so far to travel that sometimes you just have to lose some of the stuff that you really want to keep. So there is still a bit of paint left on here. I do want to tilt some of that off. The weight of the paint is more in the center at the moment. So I'm going to be stretching that side. Okay, that's what we got. So I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna let these cells pop up. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. And I will bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. This is partially dried. The center is still wet, but the edges are dry. And so you can see what the final result would be. Really happy with how this turned out. Like this area looks like northern lights. Super cool. You got these nifty little fingerlings in there. Really interesting blends in some of these cells. Yeah, really happy with this piece. Um, yes. So check out the description box below for links to uh, my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined, our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art, uh, affiliate links and coupon codes. Get yourself some of these deco art paints using the links. Uh, and I receive a small commission at no ad additional co cost to you. Uh, and there's lots of other affiliate links in there. And uh, yeah, that's it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.